Welcome to episode seven of Will's Guide. I posted a video earlier today. It was quite long. It was the first in a series on scheme macros, hygienic macros. Um, actually, I was going to make another macro video today. It turned out that Michael Ballantyne was visiting, who's a macro expert. And the macro I was going to show, we spent quite a bit of time reworking it and coming up with a nicer macro. So I now have, I think, five versions of the macro that redefines or extends the interface for Mini Canron. So I'll make some videos about that, and maybe more than one, and probably make that tomorrow. But I do want to try to hit my goal of three videos a day, so I can hit my 1,024 YouTube videos this year, or one kilo tube. So got two more videos to go today. So I think since my first video today was like 53 minutes, pretty long, fairly technical, I'd like to make two videos that are pretty short and a little easier to, to uh, digest and uh, require less prep, but hopefully are, are useful and interesting. Now, one thing that isn't specified in the scheme standard, but is implemented in some lists and in some variants of schemes are what are called property lists on symbols. And Shea scheme, which is the implementation that I'm mostly going to show, maybe along with Racket, um, Shea scheme implements property lists. And I didn't know about this until I'd been using Shea for quite a while, actually. And when I was in grad school, I think Dan Friedman told me about property lists. So it's kind of kind of a neat feature. If I start up Shea, we can look, first of all, at the idea of, say, a string, so cat. And that is different in scheme from a symbol. So quote cat, which is that quote symbol, shorthand for Q-U-O-T-E, -E, cat. Um, this is what's called a quoted symbol. And in general, the evaluation rule in scheme is quote of some datum produces or evaluates to that datum. Okay, so that's that's what the rule for quote is. So quote of cat gives you back cat. What is cat? Well, cat is what's called in scheme a symbol. So we can do symbol question mark of quote cat. And sure enough, we get hash T. We can say, uh, we can ask string question mark of quote cat, nope, hash F. And similarly, we can turn this into a string. All right, so we have the symbol cat. And one question we can ask is if two symbols are equal, so is quote cat equal to quote dog? The answer is no. There are different notions of equality in scheme. So there's also something called EQV. And there's also another one called EQ question mark, which is effectively pointer equality. And symbols in scheme can be used with pointer equality, or they can be used with EQV, or they can be used with equal. And so these are finer green uh, versions of, of predicates. We'll talk about that more when we look more at the scheme specification. But anyway, you can compare symbols using EQ. So I can compare cat, quote cat, with quote cat. Okay, the symbol cat is equal to symbol cat. Nice. And one nice thing about comparison of symbols is it's very fast. Okay, and it's also safe to compare with EQ question mark. Turns out not everything in scheme is safe to compare with EQ question mark. You know, we'll talk about that more, but um, you know, the, one of the reasons that symbols exist in Lisp is that they're fast to compare. Another reason is that symbols are atomic. Scheme implements something called atom question mark. Sure enough, cat, the symbol cat is an atom, whereas the string cat is also an atom. Oh, okay. Um, but even though those may be considered atoms, there is a function called string length that we can run on cat. 
and we'll find that string the length of the string of the cat string is three. And furthermore, we can actually do a string ref. Let's see if I can remember where this number goes. Uh, does it come first? Nope. Okay. So we can index into the string to get the characters. These are characters in scheme. We can get the characters that make up the string. And if we go outside the bounds, we get an error. Okay, so um, strings, even though uh, Adam question mark says that, yes, a string is an atom in Shea scheme, you know, they're not really atoms in the same way a symbol is because they they do have structure, whereas an, as an, a symbol doesn't have structure that you can uh, readily get your hands on. You can't break apart a symbol into characters in the same way a string can. Now, that's a little bit of a debate, I guess, because there is something called symbol arrow string. So we can convert the symbol cat to the string cat. Okay, and then as soon as we convert the uh, symbol to the string, then we can do the string ref. And get the parts. But notice we had to change the type. We had to convert the symbol into a string. Okay, in order, in order to do that. Anyway, if you do any scheme programming and if you do in general list programming, you're going to see there's an awful lot of use of symbols because they can represent atomic entities like a chess knight. Okay, so if you have a chess knight, well, the concept of a knight doesn't have pieces or parts. You know, it's just, it's a knight. That's what it is. It's conceptually one entity. Now, you might say that you have a knight that is black or a knight that is white. You might say that currently a knight is on a certain square. But the concept of a knight, you could claim, is, is an atomic entity. Doesn't, it's not really divisible. It's not like, you know, a word that you might break into syllables, let's say. But there are lots of ways of representing information and knowledge. And one of the things that Lisps are traditionally strong at is giving you lots of different approaches to structuring information, structuring knowledge, representing knowledge. One of the tools that you get from Shea Scheme are these property lists. So let's say that, I don't know, uh, well, the example given in the Shea Scheme Manual, uh, Shea Scheme User's Guide, is that, for example, a natural language program might use symbols to represent words using their property list to store information about use and meaning. Okay. Well, like I said, in, in some sense, you can consider words as non-atomic entities because they're made of, you know, in a written language, they may be written in various types of character systems. Maybe they're written in Roman alphabet. And so if I just write the word knight, okay, we have, you know, different letters that make a, that up, this, which is why we, you know, can talk about strings. We might also have other ways to divide up a word into things like syllables, you know, where we hyphenate the word if we were to break it across a page, page break. So, but like I said, when you're representing knowledge, representing information, you might choose different ways to represent things. So, you know, we can say that a word like night, we're just going to treat that as symbolic information. And maybe for night, we want to place some information on the symbol itself. Okay, so Shea maintains a list of the symbols that are around in the system at any given time, which is called the ob list. Okay, a list of intern symbols or symbols that are um, used internally. So we can look at the ob list. 
And you can see that there are quite a few symbols at this point. And the system keeps going on. And uh, apparently this is a list. Let's make sure. Okay, it really is a list. Since it's a list, we can ask, what's the length? Great. And we can do something like, um, what's the what's the function he's okay and memq if memq all right so if memq say night is in the law uh, the list so if that's true if the symbol night is in our ob list then return yes otherwise return no okay so we get back a yes so night was in the ob list what if I put in foo? It is now, I guess, because we just created the symbol foo. Uh, and I can come up with some. So, All right, well, it's in the ob list because we just created the symbol. And as soon as we create the symbol, it goes into the ob list. Or, fair enough. Is there anything interesting here for the ob list? Okay, so we can also ask if one version you know, if the obelisk is equal to itself, yes, it is. And we can ask if the length of the obelisk is equal to the length of the obelisk. It is right now because nothing got uh, modified. Okay, excellent. So there are some things we can do with the obelisk. We can ask what's in the car of the obelisk. Okay, the symbol info load. So we've got all these, uh, you know, we can also do like a list ref. So let's get, you know, um, let's see if I can remember where the number goes. The thousandth entry. Okay, the thousandth entry looks like a gen sim, looks like a generated symbol. So we can produce a new gen sim. And let's see if I can remember how to do this. Does that work? Yep. So I can produce a new gen sim um, based on, say, the string X. And each time, I call gen sim, I get a different unique generated symbol. And you can see in this case, in addition to this lovely, uh, you know, generated symbol information, we also have this counter zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we also have gen sims that are in the ob list. So we could play games with this list of symbols. One of the games we can play is we can associate information with the symbol itself. So we're looking at the symbol night, and we can add something to the property list of that symbol. So let's see. Uh, let's see if there is a property list already on night, the symbol night. So it looks like there's property list of quote night. Okay, we get back the empty list. All right, no, no properties there. We can use put prop to add um, key value pairs. So let's see, we can say put prop. I think this will work. Okay, we're gonna add to the night. We're gonna say the color of the night and you know, just for fun, maybe I'll use a a string instead of a symbol. Probably in practice, I'd use a symbol. Oh, put prop is not bound. Okay, it's put prop without a hyphen. Put prop without a hyphen. All right. So now let's look at the property list. Okay, so color is associated with, with uh, black. Instead of put prop, let's try using get prop on the symbol with the key color and we get back black. And so now we can update the property. Maybe I want to change the color of the chest knight. And so now we get back white instead. And I can also, if I wanted to add a new property um, colors and I can make the list of black and white. Let's say, let's look at the uh, colors. We got the list black and white. And if I get 
the property list. Okay, so now we have associations between colors and the list black, white, and color and white. Um, all right, so this allows us to associate key value pair information like in what's called an association list in, in Lisp with any symbol. And the example given in the text or in the Shea Scheme user's guide is with natural language processing. Fine, we might want to give parts of speech. We might want to say, let's just say something like, uh, I don't know, let's uh, say move is, you know, um, part of speech is a verb. Okay, and now I can do get prop move part of speech and I can start building up different types of information on um, a you know, dictionary of words or I can now start building sentences so we could try doing this one more time so we could say um, how about we do move okay how about we say uh, do -do. Cat is a noun, and okay, and so we can have a sentence, I guess, which would be like, you know, uh, move cat. It's not not a great sentence. Move cat. And now we could do something like if we wanted to, or, you know, I could also just quote this entire list. So what can we do with this? Okay, so now I can do a map. So for each element, for each symbol in that list, we could apply uh, property list. Oops, wrong order. Okay, so we're applying uh, the function property list to each of the symbols in the list. And we can see we've got two answers. And we can also um, create like a little function here. Okay, so a function is gonna take a symbol and we're gonna call the get prop symbol for part of speech. And we can map that function across our little list that represents a sentence, and we can see we have a verb and noun. So we could start diagramming sentences representing NLP um, information or natural language information in various ways and use these properties to be able to keep track of information sort of at a different layer of rep representation, even though we're using these atomic symbols to represent the words, we can stick arbitrary scheme objects into properties associated with those symbols. Okay, so those are property lists. They exist in other variants of Lisp, but they're not part of the scheme standard. They are, however, part of Shea Scheme and maybe other scheme implementations as well. And you might find these handy, although just beware that code that you write that makes use of property lists may not work in other scheme implementations. All right, that's it. Hope that is handy. If you didn't know that about Shea Scheme, I suggest you play around with this if you wanna know Shea Scheme better. I'll try to point out other interesting things about Shea or other implementations that I didn't know when I first started using them. Talk to you soon.